The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C Channel and were dubbed in English. Hello, I am Ji Yoon Lee from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. When I was young, my family was poor, so all I thought about was money, money, and more money. I grew up saying making tons of money is everything. But then I met the risen Jesus as Lord. He set me free from money and changed me into a missionary for young souls. I'd like to share my story with you. When I was young, my parents ran a blanket factory, but it didn't do well, and they had to close it down. They tried other businesses, but none of them did well. Both of my parents ended up getting other jobs, but our welfare didn't improve. Later on, my parents opened a fishmonger and a small open-air market business, but those failed too. We were always struggling with money. When I was young, everything I wanted was relatively cheap, so even though we didn't have much, I didn't feel the lack. But when I became a teenager, expensive things that my friends had, like MP3 players, the latest cell phones, etc., started to catch my eye. One day, a girl wore a designer headband to class, and I really loved it. I wanted it so badly that I found out how much it was, but it cost 10 times as much as a normal headband. It was way too expensive to afford with my allowance, but that made me want it even more. I desperately wanted to have it. I needed to have it. From that point on, all I could think about was money. I thought, all you need is money in this world. Money is the best. Yes, when I am older, all I need to do is earn lots of money. If I earned lots of money, I could do everything I wanted, so I decided that I would get rich no matter what. While other kids only thought about getting into university, I only thought about money. Unlike everyone else, university was not important to me at all. I didn't want to waste my money on tuition. It was more important to me that I made money and got rich fast so that I could have the things I wanted, eat what I wanted to eat, and do what I wanted to do. So I started searching through books and the internet in order to find out how I could make lots of money. While searching online, I read about what the beginnings of the Toyota Corporation had been like. Toyota used to be a factory that manufactured sewing machines before it became a global car manufacturer. The story was really appealing to me. I began to dream of becoming a rich CEO and was thinking about how I could make the capital I needed to start a business. A friend in my class asked me if I wanted to try working part-time as a paid studio audience on TV. Successful businessmen would say, don't miss the opportunity when it comes. This felt like the opportunity. So I said, okay, I wouldn't just be making money, I'd get to see celebrities too. It sounded fantastic. All I had to do was laugh and applaud. It was such an easy job. But when I went to work, things were completely different from what I had expected. I had left early in the morning to get to the studio. Now it was nighttime and it didn't look like the work would be over anytime soon. I hadn't eaten lunch or dinner, so I was starving. I wouldn't have minded being hungry if I was getting to see my favorite singers, but all I got to see were old singers I didn't know. <laughs> I was tired and hungry and I thought, why am I here? Did I come here just to suffer like this? I was paid after the shooting was finally over, but when I opened the envelope, there were two lousy $10 bills inside. I thought, why did I go through all that trouble from 7 in the morning to 11 at night just to make $20? I guess making money really isn't easy at all. I realized that I wouldn't be able to make lots of money by doing things like this, so I never went back to being a paid studio audience member. After that, I graduated from high school and went to a random university without really caring. But I had no interest in studying. Making enough money to start my own business was my top priority. That was why, not long after I started school, I took a leave of absence and worked various odd jobs. I worked in a movie theater, made pizzas, packed stationery in a warehouse, distributed leaflets, worked as a cashier and an office assistant, worked in a cafe, etc. But it was hard to make enough money to start a business on minimum wage. There was another reason why I had to make lots of money. My older sister had gotten a job in the U.S. with the help of our aunt. My sister had been my financial support. 
I would deposit some of my paycheck into savings and then use the rest for my living expenses. After that, I was always short on cash, and my sister would always help me out without a complaint. But now, if I wanted to visit her in the U.S., I needed a lot of money and time. It was hard enough to make money as it was, but so many things kept happening that demanded even more money. So after much thought, I decided to get a full-time job. I got a job in an online shopping mall through a friend. From that point on, I lived a very frugal life. I didn't go out with friends, cut myself off from everyone, and just concentrated on saving up money. After all that effort, I was close to achieving the goal amount I wanted in my savings account. Just reading the amount of money I had in my savings account made me so happy. <laughs> I felt like I was one step closer to fulfilling my dreams. But right around that time, something happened to my parents and they urgently needed money. They asked me how much I had saved up. When I told them, they immediately asked me to lend them the money I had worked so hard for. It felt like a lightning bolt had struck me. How could they ask that of me? I felt like they were so heartless and inconsiderate of my feelings, but I couldn't say no either. I wanted to die rather than give them the money. Transferring the money to my father's account was such a bitter pill to swallow. After it was done, I felt empty inside and everything felt meaningless. Why had I gone through all that trouble when I wasn't even going to get to spend it and it would just vanish into thin air? Why did my parents have to need the money now when I happened to be taking a step closer to my dreams? Why did our family have to struggle with money? So much frustration and bitterness tormented me inside. From that point on, a hatred for God started to grow inside me. Our family were good Christians, went to church on Sundays, always gave tithes, and served in the church a lot. Why did we have to struggle with money so much when other people who didn't believe in Jesus made lots of money and had great lives? I just couldn't understand at all. I regretted believing in God whom I couldn't even see. I regretted all the possessions and time I had invested in Him. It felt so unfair. I decided not to go to church anymore and erased God from my heart. I felt pathetic and miserable because I felt like I was quitting without being compensated for any of the work and effort I had put into serving the church and believing in God. Also, when I couldn't see how my dream of making lots of money and getting rich could realistically be accomplished, I felt a sense of loss and despair, and life became miserable. From then on, I became completely taken over by my worry for money. While I was spending each day in agony like this, my mom asked me to go to the church retreat with her. So I went with her to get a change of scenery. The worship services began, and the pastor said, The proof with which we can believe that the man Jesus is the Creator God is Jesus' resurrection, which was prophesied about in the Bible. The words, The man Jesus, struck me as something new. Jesus was a man? He was a human being like me? As someone brought up in a Christian family, I had grown up hearing about how Jesus was God and I had believed it without doubting. But that day it was different. I remembered the scene of Jesus' death from the film The Passion of the Christ. The one who had hung on the cross had felt suffering, pain, sadness, and all the other emotions I could feel. Every nerve and cell in my body reacted to that realization. He had been a human being. That one sentence pierced my heart in a way I can't describe. During one Saturday worship service, the pastor asked us, Do you believe that we were bought by the blood of Jesus? Do you believe that the Almighty rose from the dead and is in your heart as your Lord? And I answered, Amen. He then asked, Do you believe that all of your possessions belong to the Lord? But I didn't want to say Amen to that question. That was when I saw that I still hadn't completely let go of my possessions in my heart. I thought of Matthew chapter 6. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, 
there your heart will be also. No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and money. I realized that all this time I had been storing up treasures on earth and not in heaven. I had been serving two lords. It felt like God was asking me, Who is your Lord? That was when I finally realized that Jesus was not the Lord of my heart. I had said that everything belonged to Jesus except for one thing. My possessions. But that was the same as claiming that everything belonged to me. That evil was the same evil that the people had in Acts 2, where they whipped Jesus and nailed him to the cross. When God showed me that, I was paralyzed with shock. What should I do? What should I do? God had sent his one and only son to save me. When I saw this heart of God through the resurrection, I realized what an evil person I was. I had still not believed in Jesus as Lord. Before the Lord who had accomplished everything through his resurrection, I had been my own Lord and had not believed in him using money and my circumstances as my excuses for hating and ignoring the Lord. With all my heart, I knelt before God and repented of the sin of not believing in Jesus as my Lord. I told my friends the fact that the risen Jesus was God and the joyful news that he was my Lord. Also, I prayed every morning that I'd be a missionary for the Lord and went out to share the gospel on the streets with the members of my church body. Then, a Sunday school teacher in my small church asked me if I wanted to try teaching Sunday school for kids in kindergarten. I believed that this was God's answer to my prayers and said yes. A new semester began, and I was in charge of a class with five-year-old children. I was so nervous during our first lesson that all we did was greet each other and introduce ourselves. I felt so burdened about leading a class by myself, and I was anxious that I wouldn't be able to do a good job. I prayed about it, and God let me remember the verse in Philippians 4 that said, Do not be anxious. I taught Sunday school as I prayed with this verse. I wanted to give presents to the children in my class, even though I was not making money at the time, so I prayed with this heart. God, I want to give presents to the children you have entrusted me with, but I don't have much money. I am not hoping for a place that pays a lot. I'd be okay with a place that doesn't pay much, so please lead me to a job that I can enjoy and be good at. Soon after I had prayed like this, a small church member told me about a job at a nursing home and I began to work there. When I got my first paycheck, I gave my tithe to the Lord. Then apart from my living costs, I had just enough to buy small presents for the children. This was exactly what I had prayed for, but I was not disappointed at all. I was so happy and thankful to have this money. For the first time in my life, I realized how wonderful it felt to be able to pick out presents for children and pay for them. When I realized how much God loved us, I understood how appropriate it was to love the children with God's love and not the love I had learned through the world. In Sunday school, the children declared that they ought to lay down their lives for their brothers and sisters. Then one day, while I was praying for them, it felt like God was asking me if I could love those young children enough to even give up my life for them. To this question, I answered, Yes, Lord, I ought to die for my brothers and sisters. What the kids had said just as a declaration during Sunday school became real to me at that moment. The love of the Lord which was proven by his resurrection, consumed me. The moment I believed in Jesus, 
who rose from the dead and became my Lord, I had become someone who could say Amen to all the words in the Bible. The pastor often said that witnesses of the resurrection had to make disciples, raise them up, and establish small churches in this wicked and adulterous generation. I heard this message as if God was speaking it to me, and I prayed so that I could apply it to my life. I prayed, God, I will take part in waking up this wicked and adulterous generation. Please send me people whom I can make disciples of and look after. Then I suddenly thought of the kids in my Sunday school class. I realized that the kids I had been entrusted with were the precious souls I was to care for and raise up as disciples. God gave me the heart to care for them till the end and to serve them with love and prayer. I hope that the young kindergarten children of Hammam Church who believe in Jesus in their hearts as their Lord will grow up to become strong soldiers and leaders of God and wake up this wicked and adulterous generation. Amen. In the past, my money was too precious for me to even lend to my parents, and all I ever cared about was money. But now I believe in the risen Jesus as my Lord in my heart and have become someone who lives only for the Lord and his mission. Now I serve the Lord's precious young souls with love, and I'll live the life of a missionary who cares for them. Jesus, I love you. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMUOnlyJesus or Google us at HMUOnlyJesus.